An historic and extraordinary event took place earlier this week at the American Supreme Court, an event which has not until now been made public. As you know, the Supreme Court sat in special session on Wednesday to hear a case about ca campaign financing. What you do not know is that later that afternoon, they heard an emergency case about Johns Hopkins University. <laughs> it arose out of an application for habeas corpus brought by a coalition of Canadian universities <laughs> seeking the release of Ron Daniels from the presidency of Johns Hopkins and requesting his return to Canada. <laughs> Knowing I would be here today, the US Supreme Court graciously authorized me to make their brief decision public at this installation. It was a unanimous decision and it reads as follows. <clears throat> The Coalition of Canadian Universities, hereinafter referred to as the Coalition, seeks the release and return to Canada of Ron Daniels based on several grounds. First, it argues that given the precarious state here of health care, the economy, and the Baltimore Orioles, <laughs> Daniels ought to be returned to Canada for his own safety. Although he is a highly sophisticated and mature adult, the coalition argues that because he looks 12 years old, <laughs> he is entitled to the protection of the court. <laughs> Secondly, they argue that since Johns Hopkins does not have a law school, it is not a real university. <laughs> and is therefore unworthy of Daniels. They urged the court to return him to Canada where universities with law schools are a dime a dozen. <laughs> but the heart of their application and the real source of their grievance is that Daniels' presidency at Johns Hopkins represents an incalculable loss for Canada. The motto of Johns Hopkins is, the truth will free you. The truth in this case, in our respectful view, is that the coalition wants to free Daniels not so much for his own benefit, but for the benefit of his continued intellectual leadership in Canada. Not surprisingly, Johns Hopkins vigorously opposed the coalition's application. Initially, the university took the position that Daniels' appointment represented an important part of its affirmative action program. <laughs> to encourage candidates for president from among previously underrepresented groups. <laughs> By far, the most underrepresented group turned out to be Canadian lawyers who were Jewish. <laughs> Daniels was the only candidate who qualified. <laughs> However, after reading this court's critical comments about affirmative action in our recently released New Haven Firefighters case, Johns Hopkins chose instead to rely on the merit principle, coincidentally the very same selection criterion that is used to choose the members of this court who are not wise Latina women. <laughs> The coalition's application is compelling and understandable. The absence of Daniels from Canada is an enormous loss from that country of an iconic scholar of unparalleled brilliance, according to the intervener brief filed by his mother. <laughs> Having ourselves reviewed his curriculum vitae, we acknowledge the breathtaking range of his cerebral academic and policy legacy and accept that the loss of his leadership verges on the irreplaceable. But unfortunately for the coalition, two factors bar the possibility of Daniel's release back to Canada. The first is the bedrock American constitutional principle that the pursuit of happiness is the right of every individual. Although Daniel's is a lawyer, he is nonetheless an individual. <laughs> and he is very happy at Johns Hopkins. 
we would no more stand between him and his happiness than we would stand between a hanging chad and a vote. <laughs> Secondly, although this court does not feel itself slavishly bound by precedent, in this case we feel we cannot ignore the precedential guidance of what America's long-standing relationship with Canada is based on. Common borders, common interests, and a common understanding that when America wants something, it gets it. <laughs> And since America wants Daniels, it gets Daniels. <laughs> Accordingly, although we agree with the coalition's submission that Daniels' presence in Canada means a better Canada, we are nonetheless also of the view that Daniels' presence in America means a better America. The application to have him released back to Canada is therefore dismissed. We understand that an appeal from our decision will be launched at the Supreme Court of Canada. <laughs> but see no reason to delay the installation scheduled to take place on Sunday. Costs will be awarded against the Baltimore Orioles since they've had a lousy year anyway. <laughs> America, Baltimore, Johns Hopkins, you are getting in Ron Daniels the very best, our country, our academies, my profession, are capable of producing. A lawyer committed to promoting the role of law, the rule of law, the compassion of law, and the fairness of law. A lawyer, in short, committed to promoting justice and to ensuring that law and justice never leave each other's side as they patrol the universe. An academic committed to promoting intellectual vibrancy, intellectual pluralism, intellectual collaboration, and intellectual leadership. A scholar, in short, committed to promoting ideas and to ensuring that those ideas are at the service of public policy and that those policies are at the service of the public. All of this combines in your new polymathic president into a magnificent alchemy of enthusiasm, optimism, generosity, and wisdom. An alchemy stirred with warmth and humility and using only the finest ingredients. He donates this energetic magic selflessly and brilliantly to everything he does and to everyone he loves, turning all of it and all of us into something better than we ever thought possible. That's why his colleagues, his friends, and his country gratefully adore him, knowing he is our best self and proud that we have had the chance to be up close and personal with this incomparable phenomenon. And being up close and personal, we know where he gets the fuel to keep him and the rest of us in perpetual, positive, and joyful motion. Joanne and their glorious kids. Joanne is Ron's emotional and intellectual partner, his muse, his most trusted and wisest advisor, and the source of his ability to combine a preternaturally active brain with a peaceful soul. Together, they are a luminously loving juggernaut, deeply committed to each other, and deeply aware of how lucky they are. And now their luck has brought them to Baltimore, the city that produced H.L. Mencken, Hairspray the Musical, and one of the greatest universities in the world. It is a city many of us came to love through the cinematic Valentines of Barry Levinson, my favorite of which is Avalon. I rented it a couple of nights ago as part of my sentimental preparation for this weekend and got goosebumps hearing these opening words of the movie, words spoken by an immigrant as he serendipitously arrives in Baltimore on July the 4th to start a new life. He says, with eerie resonance, I came to America by way of Philadelphia, and then I came to Baltimore. It was the most beautiful place you've ever seen in your life. There were lights everywhere. It was a celebration of lights. I thought they were for me because I was in America. People cheered. What a welcome it was. What a welcome. Well, Ron, the cheering is for you as you start your new life here. And the enthusiastic welcome comes with every expectation that your mutual dreams will be realized. And so from the opening words of Avalon to closing words from George Gershwin, 
words with that unique American blend of elegance and schmaltz, and words to help lift you proudly and lovingly into your and Hopkins and America's and the world's future. Of the I sing, baby. <laughs> you have got that certain thing, baby. <laughs> Shining star and inspiration, worthy of a mighty nation, of thee I sing. Keep being our shining and inspiring star, Ron. We will always sing of thee. <laughs>